All right, so it gives me great pleasure today to introduce Professor Jonathan, Jonathan Kipnis. So Jonathan is a professor of neuroscience at the University of Virginia School of Medicine, um, and he's also the director for the Center for Brain Immunology and Glia. Jonathan's lab um, focuses on understanding the complex interactions between the immune system and the central nervous system, and really came to light in recent weeks with their publication in Nature on June 1st, um, where they looked at the structural and functional features of central nervous system lymphatic vessels. So thank you, Jonathan, for your time today. It's a fantastic opportunity to talk to you. My pleasure. Thank you for hosting me here. No worries. So I guess the, the first question that, that we want to ask is sort of if you could just give us a bit of a general background into the, the interests of your lab and sort of how you got involved and what you're doing. Yeah, so my lab is interested in neuroimmune communication and we've been uh, looking in on the role of immune system in maintenance of brain function, both in healthy state and in disease, primarily in CNS injuries and inflammation and infections. And um, one area which uh, occurred to us to be very interesting from a neurological perspective is the meninges. And so that's why our intention for the last maybe five, six years was really concentrated on meningeal immunity to understand what are the effects that meningeal immunity has on brain function in health and in disease. And so the the recent findings that you published in Nature, can you summarize those for us? I mean, it's a, it's a different Yeah, so we've been looking too. for, so we saw that there is a, even if you take a mouse and you stress the mouse, or mouse learns a new task, or mouse undergoes obviously infection or uh, brain trauma, you see lots of, uh, we saw, um, um, substantial changes in meningeal immunity. And the question that we had was, how are these immune cells getting in and out of the brain? The brain is considered to be an immune privileged organ. It is an immune privileged organ. And it considers to be considered to be to not have any lymphatic vessels. So the question that we had was, well, if there is no lymphatic vessels, how is information transmitted from the brain out in the periphery and how the cells get in and how do they get out? Um, so we've been looking for ways, honestly, for cells to get in, but then we found that uh, around the sinuses in the dura of the meninges, there is a major blood reservoir, you would want to call it probably, called this, the sinuses, where all the blood from the brain is drained and then from there it goes out in the periphery. And so we're labeling for immune cells and we found that they are very much concentrated around those, those sinuses. What we realized is that they were in a in the vascular structures which were not part of blood vasculature. And we said, wait a second, so we see immune cells, they are in vascular structure, and this is not blood vasculature, so what would it be? Well, it can be lymphatic vasculature because the brain has no lymphatics, but then that's the only other vascular system that we know about. So we said, okay, let's just label with, with the lymphatic arterial cell marker just to make sure that, you know, to take it off our list of worries. And we labeled and it, we were wrong and these were actually lymphatic endothelial cells. Uh, and we got this beautiful labeling of lymphatic vessels uh, going along the side of, uh, of the sinuses. So, I mean, that's an amazing discovery that goes against, you know, decades of established it's really, knowledge. It's really crazy. Yeah, so my two worries. One is that we are, we are wrong in what we are showing. Then maybe we're labeling something, you know, blood vessels and something wrong. And then worry number two was that maybe we, are, we discovered something that has been known for years, just nobody cared. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've been reading and reading and reading and we realized that, yes, if nobody has described lymphatic vessels in the, in the meninges, and then when we did this, the function, we showed that these lymphatic vessels are draining cerebrospinal fluid. So not only they are located in the, in, in, the, in the proximity to the parenchyma, but they also drain the CSF, which basically, and they drain it to the deep cervical lymph nodes. And we also show that this is a, the only pathway, or the main pathway, for drainage of uh, CSF proteins and immune cells into deep cervical lymph nodes. So it is actually the connection between the brain and the periphery. So yes. I, I will not, I will lie to you if I tell you that we're not super excited about it. I think everyone, uh, everyone is super excited having heard about this finding because as I said, I mean, it goes against decades of what we've read in textbooks about 
everything that we know about the brain. Um, I guess, how did you manage to find something that's been hidden for so long? You know, the only reasoning I can give to it is that they were waiting for us to be found. So, they <laughs> I don't know. It was, uh, you know, very few labs have been looking into meningeal, uh, meningeal spaces. Uh, we were one of those, but very few labs did. Um, and I think that one of the major breakthroughs that took us there was uh, the first author, a postdoc of mine, Antoine Lovou, who is really absolutely uh, exceptional, exceptional scientist. He managed to develop a whole mound technique of the meninges. So he was able to kill the entire thing of the brain and mount it in one piece mm -hmm. on the slide. And so when we got this meningeal uh, lymphatic vessel labeling, it wasn't just, you know, just one spot. It was the entire thing was labeled. So it was very obvious that what we see are real vessels. And uh, from there on, it was just uh, nailing down the details. But the major, major finding, we, we, we knew it in April 2014. Mm -hmm. And so this is obviously going to have potential major impacts for the study of neurological diseases. I would want to hope so. Yeah. I mean, that's the next goal. I mean, can you comment at all? And I know this is this is early. Um, yes. Yeah, so, so you know, the the lymphatics have many many functions, right? They drain the cere the, the the interstitial fluids of all tissues into the periphery. They also uh, routes for immune cell trafficking from the tissue to the to the to the lymph nodes. So we believe that they do exact same job in the CNS. And we don't know if anything is wrong with lymphatic vessels in MS, or, but it is inconceivable to assume that maybe they could drain too much proteins out and then you have too many proteins in the immune system gets too much activated. That's one option. The other option could be is that um, their role is to maintain T cells in some sort of uh, energy state and they are failing to do so. Because meningeal vessels in tumors are known to energize T cells against the tumor. Mm -hmm. So they may be doing this kind of function. We don't know yet. Our finding, our paper, was not about any disease. And it was purposefully so. We want to just describe the vessels and say, here they are. Now let's, each lab takes those vessels into their disease of interest. Mm -hmm. And so we personally are very much looking into MS and meningitis and seen as injury, but I hope that many other labs in the field will also do so. So yeah, I think that yeah. lots of interesting findings probably will come in, in, in a couple of next years. Mm -hmm. So what are the what are the next steps for the, the Kipnis lab? What's happening? Well at the so, yeah, you know, so MS is obviously our major major goal and we I can I can reveal you a secret we already see some changes in the course of the animal model of MS, EAE if we are altering the meningeal lymphatics. So we are, I think I'm pretty confident then that by altering their function, we will change the course of the disease. Um, and then meningitis is our number two goal, and number three is CNS injury to see, we see because after we do CNS injury, we see immediate activation of immune cells in the deep cervical lymph nodes. Mm -hmm. And so we think that these this, 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 uh, channels are serving as a really uh, highways for brain immune communication. Mm -hmm. So we may be able to enhance this communication or slow it down by controlling the, the, the vessels. So that, that's where we're going. Okay, fantastic. I mean, uh, do you have any final comments that you want to make about your study, about the, the look into MS to, to the people? No, I just, I, I, I really, I really, you know what, uh, I remember maybe six, seven years ago when we first looked at the, at the, at the meningeal uh, immunity and saw some changes there with the animals learning some tasks. I had this feeling that maybe through meningeal immunity we will be able to understand the etiology of MS and maybe why MS, the, you know, the relapses and remissions and why it gets into primary progress, into progressive disease. Mm -hmm. And today I feel that we are made one step, we're just one step closer, but who knows how many more steps we have to make. But I just hope that we're on the right, 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 right uh, track and hopefully more loves will join us now. And uh, we'll, 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 we'll. I think the major problem with MS is we don't understand what triggers it. Mm -hmm. We understand what triggers it, I think will be much, it will be much easier for uh, 
other labs, better labs, to yeah. find out the you new know, uh, treatments and then the better cures. I mean, it's the key question for all of us, isn't it, that that are have been or are in MS research is finding that finding that yes. trigger. But um, yes. to say that this was a, a big step forward, um, I think I didn't say big. I just said one one step. No, forward. no, but but I think I, I, I think it's a big step. And I think it's one step one step closer. We probably are one step closer to understanding the mechanisms. Yeah. And I, I think it's been a while since we've seen a paper, in my experience anyway, a while that since we've seen a paper get um, the sort of excitement and coverage that this paper has received. So uh, congratulations. Um, as Thank I said you. to you in the in the first email that I sent you, it's a, an amazing discovery, um, one that's excited all of us, and we really look forward to to hearing more coming out, out of your lab in the future and, and staying in touch with everything that that you guys are doing. Well, fingers crossed. Thank fingers you. Crossed. Thanks so much. Right. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you so much, Jonathan.